Hello and welcome to our new video. A few years ago, the common belief among the researchers was that adding more layers to the network will improve the classification accuracy. However, over the years, multiple experiments have shown that this assumption may not always be correct. The truth is that training accuracy often drops as the layer increase. And to solve this problem and improve accuracy of our model, we can use the residual networks. In today's video, we will learn about REST nets and uh, their ar architecture. In our previous posts, we learned about some popular deep convolutional ne neural networks such as AlexNet and VGG. Uh, in these networks, the model performance increases propor proportionally with the number of layers. Uh, if you think about this, uh, it's a logical uh, solution to solve a complex classification problem. If the problem is more complex, the more layers we need. Uh, the intuition behind uh, adding more layers is that uh, these layers progressively learn more complex features. However, this assumption is not always true. Researchers discovered that there is a limit for deep convolutional neural network models. The more layers we add, the network be becomes more difficult to train. Here we can see a plot that uh, describes error percentage uh, on training and testing data for a 20 layer network and 56 layers network. Uh, this image suggests that uh, simply stacking more and more layers uh, is not such a good idea and the accuracy of our network is going to decrease. And the main reason why this happens is a well-known problem called vanishing and exploding gradients. The vanishing uh, gradient problem is uh, enco encountered uh, while updating uh, weights during uh, the backpropagation step. When we apply the chain rule, we update our weights proportional to the partial derivative of the loss function with respect to the uh, current weight in each iteration of training. The problem is uh, that in some cases uh, the gradient will be extremely small and it would prevent the weight from uh, changing its value. And in the worst case uh, this may completely stop the neural network from further training. So the solution to solve this problem is to skip connections between layers, which allows us to uh, take the activation from one layer and feed it to another layer much deeper in the neural network. In that way, we will build a residual network and this enables us to train very deep networks that may have over 100 layers. REST nets are built out of a residual block. Let's describe what the residual block is. Uh, the residual block consists of two layers of a neural network and first we start off with some activation uh, AL uh, which will be passed through the uh, through a residual block. This L uh, denotes the number of channels. Uh, then after the first layer we have activation AL plus 1 and finally uh, we will get activation AL plus 2 as shown in this picture. So let's go through uh, the steps in this computation following the main path. So we have uh, AL as an input and then we apply a linear operator to it which will be governed by this equation. After that we apply the uh, ReLU nonlinearity to get AL plus 1 uh, and uh, that is governed by this equation. Then the next layer, uh, in the next layer uh, we apply linear step again here and we have this equation and finally, after planning another re uh, ReLU function, 
uh, we will get uh, a l plus 2 so in the main path uh, where we have just two layers the information from the first activation to the final activation needs to go through all of these steps and the main idea uh, of restnet, restnet is to skip one or more layers as shown in this picture so basically uh, we take a shortcut from the first to the final activation function uh, which is drawn in this uh, picture here uh, uh, we're going to take the first activation and just fast forward it much further into the neural network and uh, we will put it uh, here just before applying the, the ReLU so uh, with this shortcut uh, rather than following the main path, the information can now follow uh, follow a shortcut to go much deeper into neural network, and in that way we can calculate the output by adding a l to the final layer. And uh, this addition makes this a residual block. Notice that uh, the shortcut is actually uh, added before the re ReLU nonlinearity, each of these uh, nodes in a residual block applies a linear function and the rel uh, and the ReLU. So uh, a a l was uh, being injected after the linear part, but before the ReLU part. So the use of uh, residual blocks allows us to train much deeper neural networks. Restnets are built uh, by stacking a lot of residual blocks together. So let's uh, now see their uh, architecture. So in this image we can see a, a, 35, a 34 layer plane network. It is a terminology from the Restnet paper. And in order to turn uh, this into a Restnet we will add skip connections. And uh, in this picture uh, shows residual blocks stacked together and they represent a residual network uh, and it turns out uh, that if we use a standard optimization algorithm such as gradient descent or one or another algorithm to train a plane network we find out that uh, as we increase the number of layers the training error will tend to decrease after a while but then uh, it'll tend to increase again and in theory uh, we make a neural network uh, deeper it uh, should only uh, do better and better on training set so in practice having a very deep play network means that our optimization algorithm uh, would have a much harder time in training uh, training error gets worse if we pick a network that is too deep there are uh, different versions uh, of ResNet, including ResNet 18, ResNet uh, 34, ResNet 50, and so on. Uh, these numbers denote layers, although the architecture is the same. And now we'll take a look uh, at an example in PyTorch. In today's video we are going to learn how to build ResNet 34 architecture from scratch. So first let's import the necessary libraries. Here we will set our, our object device and uh, to understand, uh, understand uh, what we are trying to build here let's import the available pre-trained models uh, from torch vision import models we will just list all available models and here we can see all models and one of them is restnet 34 And uh, now we can load this uh, ResNet 34 model. Okay. So uh, this network is trained on 
millions of images of ImageNet database and uh, it is 34 layers deep and, it, and can classify images into 1000 categories. Uh, by using TrustMeg Learning, uh, you can get rid of the output uh, layer in this network and create a softmax unit that uh, suits uh, our own purpose. Uh, but now we'll start to build uh, our ResNet34 architecture step by step. So first, uh, the first layer of our uh, ResNet architecture uh, is a convolutional layer. So we will start uh, by uh, constructing a small uh, sequential network for the initial convolution convolutional block. It consists of uh, four operations, uh, uh, operations which are convolution, batch normalization, uh, uh, ReLU uh, activation function and max pooling. And here uh, we can see that the convolutional layers take uh, three input channels and uh, generates uh, 64 channels. Uh, the kernel size is 7 uh, by 7 pixels and stride is equal to 2 and the padding is equal to 3. Uh, this uh, COM 2D layer uh, reduces input size uh, when stride is equal to 2. Uh, so uh, the height and width of the input grid will be reduced to half and uh, then the batch normalization is applied and after each convolution operation uh, and before ReLU activation uh, finally the max pooling operation with stride of 2 is applied which will downsample our output by half again and this is important to note and uh, now let's see how to build a residual block. Each block consists of two convolutional operations and each convolutional layer is followed by a batch normalization layer and a ReLU activation function. Uh, except uh, if down sample has to be applied, the then uh, 2D con layer output uh, is added to the input before applying ReLU. So after the initial convolutional block, we will define four uh, ResNet layers. Each rails consists of multiple residual blocks, uh, and in the Torch Vision uh, library, we can find the two uh, variants of residual blocks: basic block and bottleneck block. ResNet 18 and ResNet 34 uses basic block and deeper architect architectures like ResNet 50. Uh, ResNet 100, uh, 101, 152 uh, uses uh, bottleneck block. So in our model, uh, the residual block uh, takes the input with uh, uh, input channels, applies some uh, blocks by convolutional layers and to reduce it to output channels and sum it up to the ori original output. Uh, however, it uh, sizes between output, uh, input and output uh, if mismatch, the input is down sampled before it's added to the output, as we already explained. Okay. And as we already explained, each ResNet layer is built using multiple residual blocks, so to build a ResNet layer, uh, we'll define a function called make a layer. I'll just run this and see our basic block. Okay, here we will de define our function make layer. Uh, so here uh, the first ResNet layer is created with three uh, residual blocks with 3x3 three three convolution and stride 1. And here we don't need to apply down sampling. And then uh, we can see that in second ResNet layers only the first convolution layer of the first block has stride 2 uh, and the rest of uh, all the convolutional layers are, are of stride 1. Therefore, we will apply down sampling in case that stride is bigger then one. And now we are ready to build our ResNet model.
just to create all those all of those layers uh, and here we can define the function define uh, the layers and call our restnet model as parameters we will call our basic block and uh, our layers and here we can just call the model and as you can see architecture of this model is the same as ar architecture of the pre-chain model that we called earlier in our video so the restnet architecture uh, has an adaptive uh, ad uh, average pooling layer at the end uh, and uh, is followed by a linear layer and the number of classes is mostly 1000 uh, for pre-trained networks because of 1000 image net categories so in today's video we have learned how to improve performance of our model using uh, residual networks we learned that we can skip connections between layers which allows us to take the activation from one layer and feed it to another layer much deeper in the network in that way we can solve the problem of vanishing gradients and achieve much better accuracy and furthermore we learn how to build restnet 34 architecture from scratch so if you like this video drop a like and subscribe to our channel bye